In a previous adventure, we built yet another Pi 1541. What remains is to actually set it up so that we can use it. So, join me for another adventure where we will cover all that and probably a little too much. And we're back. And as you can see, we're coming up on autumn. But with raw footage filling up all of my memory cards, parts of the summer is surely to return at some point. To get back on the topic itself, what we're dealing with today is setting up the Pi1541 free for use. For those not already familiar with the Pi1541, it's a Raspberry Pi based solution for emulating a disk drive for everyone's favorite 8-bit computer. The Commodore 64. This is the second video in this series. It assumes that you've already built a Pi 1541 already. If you haven't built one, then go do that now. I'm waiting. Waiting. Okay, everyone done. Excellent. So let's go from this to this. The first step we need to deal with is ensuring that the memory card has a file system that the Raspberry Pi can boot from. So, get a new one out of the pack, plug it into your favorite memory card reader, the one you can find, and then check it. On Windows, that's done by right-clicking on the drive and then hitting Properties. If it says EXFAT like here, We'll need to fix that. Unfortunately, the tools that come with Windows will refuse to work with larger SD cards, at least when it comes to the task of putting the FAT32 file system on it. Thankfully, there are simple third party tools that can do that for us. As you've heard, it needs administrator access to do its work. After all, its purpose is to reformat entire drives, wiping out anything that you may have had on it. So please choose wisely. Hit start, ignore the warnings, and watch everything disappear. If we check the properties for the memory card, it should now say FAT32. And with the card in a functional state, let's carry on. First thing we need to grab is the software itself. Remembering to keep in mind that Steve White made this and maintains it for all of us in the community. And finally, on the download section, we're going to grab the file for setting up a fresh memory card. Keep on scrolling and we're going to find the setup section. This will have a written overview over every step that we need to take and where everything goes. Let's follow step 2 as well and we'll get all of those Raspberry Pi foundation files downloaded to the hard drive. It takes a while. We are also going to need some of the ROM images from the WISE emulator. We are not actually going to be running the software itself, so it doesn't matter if you are not using Windows at this stage. First thing we are adding to the memory card is the Pi Foundation files. So let's get that archive opened up and then we'll just browse over to the boot folder. Let's just move the window over to the right so that we can see more than one thing at a time. We'll need bootcode.bin, fixup.dat, and start.elf. Copy on those and find our memory card. Just paste them in place. Next up is the Pi1541 software, so let's get that open up. Notice that this is the contents of the first root folder. Just copying the folder itself, 
won't work. Let's just move the SD card to the right so I can see everything at the same time. We need to grab some files out of the Vice archive, so let's open the one we downloaded. First one we need is within the Drives subfolder. Pi1541 can use the 1581 ROM image as well, but let's just grab the 1541 image for now. Switch over to our uh, SD card again, then paste it into the window. Back at the archive, we go one level back and into the C64 folder. Grab the character generator file and add it to our memory card. Before continuing, ensure that your directory structure on your SD card looks like this. If it doesn't, then correct it. Configuration is done by editing options.txt. First step is to enable split IEC lines. This is needed as the Pi 15413 is a option B build. We'll enable the character generator file that we added to the memory card. Pi 15413 uses the external LCD, so I'm disabling some of the HDMI functionality. Enable the buzzer if you soldered one in. As I've mentioned in the assembly video, these larger 1.3 inch displays aren't actually based on the SSD 1306 chip. Probably despite the uh, listing that you bought it from saying SSD 1306, when they're actually SH 1106 chips. So we need to select that one instead. You can specify a different startup logo if you want to. In a future video, I might show you how to make one. Moving on to more practical matters, let's set it up so that we can use our rotary encoder. And with that, our configuration should be completed. In order to test that everything works, in particular due to faulty or counterfeit 7406 chips, we need to add a specific game, Frozen Goblins Arcade. So, let's just get that downloaded and head on over into the 1541 folder on your memory card. Opening up the archive, we'll just grab the D64 file and drag it over to the memory card. And because that looks very messy, I'll just create a games folder and chuck it in there instead. After safely ejecting your memory card, you can plug it into your Pi 1541 free. After that, you can attempt to power it up. I'm using this Meanwell GST25B05-P1J, meaning that it's a reasonable quality DC 5 volt power supply with a standard barrel plug on the end. You can use a different one if you'd like. I just wanted to include it as something specific to look for. Because you don't want a bad power supply to ruin your Raspberry Pi or your Commodore 64 or burn down your house. If nothing exploded or smelled sort of like a toxic fire, then you can consider bringing it over to your vintage C64 and start hooking things up using a standard IEC cable. One of the first things to note is that you can't navigate the menu on the Pi 15413 until the C64 is turned on. This is actually a good sign that everything is working like it should. With the C64 turned on, we can navigate over to the games folder and select our Ghost and Goblins image. The device is now in emulation mode and we can go to the C64 screen. I'm sorry about the shaky cam, but it is what it is. So, let's just load the disk image as if it were a perfectly normal vintage disk drive. Follow along for the exciting journey on loading the game from disk.
But suffice to say, if you encounter a hang after run, the menu artwork not loading in correctly, or glitches when starting the game, then you may need to change out a few components, like the 7406 mentioned. Skip ahead to 11.35 to, well, get the exciting conclusion to this chapter. It seems that everything loaded okay, so the Pi 1541 is... It's good! With all that, you should have a Pi 1541 built to inside the envy of everyone without a 1541 Ultimate. Next in this series, we'll add a custom boot screen. Well... Then that's it for the moment. Bye.